This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 628 with Gavin Campbell, recorded on November 7th, 2024. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a beautiful fall. Bellevue, Nebraska, fall is on its way. Gavin, you were talking about uh, 80s yesterday up there yeah. in Canada. Yeah. Like, you're on the East Coast, right? Canada? Uh, Toronto, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll just say it's East, yeah, right? Yeah. It's kind of East. Ish. I wouldn't say the East Coast. <laughs> east ish you're east of me yeah. uh i would expect you guys to is it is it unusually warm for this late in november or are you guys is it okay yeah they i think they said the average should have been in the threes but um we broke some records it hit 25 degrees celsius i'll let you do the conversions yeah yeah, yeah. um f- for like a couple days and even today it was still warm um this weekend it will be 10 degrees i'll probably go play around the golf you know like nice. it's just nice. you know it's nice temperature yeah stuff. Well, good. Enjoy it. Enjoy. It. I think that the the trend, at least here in the in the United States, maybe even in Canada, winter has been holding off a little bit later and a little bit later. Kind of hangs on a little bit longer in the spring. I think maybe a little bit, or like, yeah. come on. And uh, wow, well, who knows? Who knows what's going on? Uh, but we do know what's going on. We'll post some world class show notes, and there'll be a few from from HomeTech.fm. Over there at TheAverageGuy.tv, big thanks to our Patreon subscribers. If you're on the Patreon team, thank you. Thanks for doing that. We just have one $5 plan. It's super simple. You can do it for one month or as many months as you want. Many of you do that on a regular basis, and so thank you. If you want to join that plan, head out to TheAverageGuy.tv slash Patreon. And then a big thanks, uh, Gavin. You'd mentioned Black, Black Friday is coming up uh, uh, for Thanksgiving. Don't forget, if you can go to TheAverageGuy.tv first, there's a link there. You can click through it. And uh, in all those things, that's the Amazon affiliate link and all those things will give the, give the show credit for it. So if you want to do that before you purchase, I appreciate you doing that. Big thanks to Bob and Ryan from thinkcomputers.org who joined me last week and, uh, and uh, oh, no, two weeks ago, cause I was off last week for, for Halloween and uh big thanks to them for coming on the show. They did a bang up job and you'll want to listen to the show. If you haven't done it already, Gavin is with me, Gavin, uh, welcome back. Good to see you. Oh, it's great to be back. We have a lot to get into. You know, I, I gather up all the stories over, you know, the time and yeah. listening to the show with Mike Weger the other day got me all excited. I made more notes. We're going to oh, get into nice. some, some things today. Yeah. We're going to talk a little home assistant. I did. I was, I was over at hometech.fm before the show, kind of checking out your latest post. So if you haven't subscribed to that podcast, you should, it's a lot nerdier. It's a lot more technical. It's a lot of great information. It's probably everything this show should be, but I'm just too lazy <laughs> to do the work to get it done. Um, uh, but the latest, uh, the latest episode you have out there, you let off with the M4 Mac Minis, which I have queued up and ready to buy. I haven't pulled the trigger yet. I don't know why I haven't. I, I'm gonna do it. Anything? Did you guys on the show discuss anything that could sway me from not purchasing the M4? I have an M1. Would you say anything that would sway me away or encourage me to pull the trigger a little sooner? Oh, it, you know, we're the worst to talk to when you don't want to spend money. We'll make you spend money. So, I, like, I'm go for it. it. Go for yeah. it. Yeah, you might as well I'm go for it. it. You know, I specced out a, 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 a top of the line one. I added all the bells and whistles and all the monitors and everything as much as I could. And I think I came up to about 14,000. You know, I just couldn't. Oh, press good Lord. Button. Yeah, I couldn't press that buy <laughs> button. No. Wow. No. But I did wow. get this week, actually, I got my first ever MacBook. I got a MacBook Pro oh, nice. uh, an M3, a first Apple computer I've ever yeah. had. So I'm learning yeah. it now. Cool. Um, it's it's for work, but I mean, they I got to learn it. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I don't find, Gavin, I'll be honest with you. Now I've been using this. It's coming up on three years. I think I bought the, the Mac 1 or the M1 Mac Mini. I think I bought that in february of 2021 i think that's what i bought so we'd be coming up it's three four years and uh i don't um i don't see the difference anymore between windows and mac it's weird you don't every once in a while like oh oh yeah i gotta go to the left corner or oh oh i gotta go to the right corner 
Otherwise, yeah. I just don't see that much of a difference. The M1 is still a trooper. I mean, I'm going to trade it in. They're going to give me 300 bucks for it, and I'm going to trade it in on the 800, you know, the the 16 gig with a half terabyte of storage. That'll work for me just great to get the M4 with the neural processor and some of the new AI stuff that is coming. Um, So, you know, it's a $500 upgrade. That's not a bad, that's not a bad, I mean, it's not 14000 I know, I know. <laughs> but it's only 500 so pull the trigger. Oh, for, you sure. Know, for sure. And I just recently also got, I could talk about, yeah, I can talk about uh, Mac, not uh, Microsoft Notebook, Surface Notebook. Yeah. And the first thing, as soon as I opened it, everyone in the office thought it looked like a MacBook, mm -hmm. right? Like the hardware is becoming mm -hmm. so similar now. And yeah. Yeah. it's like, yeah. I they're all that. trying to make it look like that. You know, they're yeah. all trying to make it look like that. The, the MacBook that you have is such a good performing laptop. I mean, it just, it just works well. Um, you know, it doesn't got some windows has got some real hangups with, right now with power management and sleep management it's like an old man i mean it yeah. sleeps like an old man sometimes it doesn't sometimes it doesn't do it very well sometimes it stays awake too long sometimes it gets a little hot in bed i leave it on all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know you there are times i mean for me going in between work and home i want to close the thing and put it in my bag and when i get oh, home yes. i want to sit in the bag and be cool and cl and shut itself down I don't know, a couple of years ago, that just stopped. I used to do it all the time on Windows. You'd open it back up, and it would it would wake up, and everything would be great. A couple of years ago, um, just quit doing it. And so it, it I, I don't know what's going on with Windows. So the, from a lap, I shut it down. I shut my PC down when I, when I go places now. Now, boots up pretty fast, so it's not, it's not terrible, right? Yes, but yeah. It should just open up and work. <laughs> I thought it should do. You need you need a new Windows PC too. Let's let's price one out. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I've got enough Windows. <laughs> I have enough. I have one, two, three lap Windows laptops. I don't. I don't need a. I don't need another one. So, I think I'm in pretty good shape. Well, we're here to talk a little bit, or maybe a lot a bit, about a home assistant. And uh, you had, um, you know, one of the things I think we've been running home assistant now long enough. Most people have that. Maybe you listen to the show and if you haven't, you should be that you start, you're now replacing things in your home assistant. You know, when yes. you first go to it, everything's kind of new. Those things are kind of lasting, you know, though they last for a while, you're not really replacing, but I think we're to that spot. And I think in the next year or two, I'll have to replace a good chunk of my home automation just because it's aging out right or it doesn't meet the protocols anymore it doesn't do its thing anymore it just quits we've had some of this home automation gavin i have had for eight years maybe nine yeah. and like that stuff is starting to get old so there's is are there easy ways to replace things how should we think about replacing items inside home assistant uh, there's a few. And uh, when I was listening to you and Mike talk, you know, I was making these notes and everything. And I actually gave this tip to somebody today, too. So it's still valid. Before I get into it, though, I just want to say, Mike, I'm very jealous of your golf simulator. That's all I was watching in the background. <laughs> You know, it's the whole show, great, Mike yeah. was talking, but I was looking at that golf simulator trying to figure out, you know, how much height does he have, you know, all that type of stuff. So I, I'm, I'm so jealous of that. But back to the question at hand. So <clears throat> first of all, when you, you, the problem you guys have is when you switch your devices, all your automations get messed up, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and that's mainly because the devices IDs change, right? So one huge tip is when you write your automations, do not use the devices, use the entities. Okay, what's the difference right? between a device and an entity? Then? So a device is kind of like a grouping of entities, right? Okay. So, yeah. um, and, and you can say like a light switch, you can use the light switch um, as a device. And then when you tell the light switch to turn on, it knows which entity to turn uh -huh. on, right? Okay. But instead, when you set up your automation, use the entity directly, right? And the because reason why... Because a device, they could have multiple functions, which are called entities, right? So yeah. you might have you might have a light switch that can turn on and dim and fill in the blank on so right. There's exactly yeah, there's certain things. Okay, but on top of that, in the automation, when you use the device, it uses a device ID, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that device ID changes 
every yeah. time you change a device. So if you were to delete that device and add a new device to replace it, you have a new device ID, you have to go through all your automations and re-edit them. And that's where the difficulty is. If you use the entity ID though, that's just the string, right? So when you add a new device, if you just rename the new entity, the same entity, it automatically just falls into place in all your automations, right? right. So you don't have to edit anything. I do this a number of times um, and it's so much better And that. They always say, always write your automations. When you're turning on a light, use the light entity, not the device. And that will just okay. make it easier over time. Yeah. Now you're talking about maybe programming it, but does that same advice, I don't, I just use the standard stuff. Same, same advice on when I'm setting up routines, make yep. sure I'm setting up the routines as an entity and not a device. Exactly. No matter where you use the entity name it, on a dashboard, it be in an automation, it could be in a script, wherever it is. Once you put the new entity name in, if it's the same name, it just fits into all those spots. It just drops okay. right back in place. That's good to know. So, so I would, if I was replacing a light switch, um, I usually name the device. So I would name it like office light. Right. And I'd leave all the entities because they'd have all their default little post fixes to their names. I leave it all the same. Right. And then when I create my automation, I would say, okay, the off the light dot office light, you know, entity, yeah. uh, turn it on, turn it off, do whatever. And then when I want to replace that office light, I just remove the old device from the system. I put in a new device and I would name it Office Light again. And all the entity, the light entity would call, fall back right into place. It would automatically get its name. That's going to make your life so much easier. Okay. Is it worth going back in, like if in, in just kind of checking your automations to see how you set them up? Or is it worth like double checking for the future for that? Or would it be better just to wait until you replace the next thing and then say, okay, I'm going to make sure I'm using entities and not device IDs for whatever my automations are. I, you don't have to go through and edit them all now because if they're working, they're working. But I mean, next time yeah. you replace that device, yes, go in and replace it um, and then switch it over to the entities. It'll just make it that much easier later on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and does that have any effect? Okay. What about pass through as we think about the A-Lady, right? That The yeah. the Amazon uh, um, um the automation bits of it do, does that with the same advice as far as because it just pulls you know you you tell amazon to discover it it finds it it brings it forward does that help in that in that world of automation where it's just sucking it in because i've kind of gotten to the point well this is really bad i'm doing automations half of the automations in home assistant and half of the automations in amazon's assistant and i can't remember like oh which one did i put where but it's, it's just easier, like lights and stuff are easier on in, in the Amazon space for me, right? The hardcore automations are better on Home Assistant. I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Uh, when you do the Amazon stuff, it's going to be a lot more work when you replace a device, unfortunately. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I do all my automations in in Home Assistant, but I expose the entities to the A-Lady. Um but I, all I really do in her world is put them in um, their rooms, you know, for room awareness, yeah, if anything. Yeah. But that's that's it. And I still have to do that every now and then. But how I name them, when they get exposed, like it'll be Office Light. It shows up as Office Light in the Amazon ecosystem. And I, and I re reference it as Office Light. So I don't really have to do a lot of that because I have yeah. right na good names. We had our first situation where a lamp moved. Uh, and it did, it moved down from upstairs to downstairs and we had named it something upstairs that made sense. And then it came downstairs and it was now a part of an upstairs group, but downstairs. So you turn on the upstairs lights, downstairs light comes on. Yeah. Right. And you know, you're like any, um, when you're thinking about what you've, I mean, you're doing this a lot, Gavin, when, when you think about naming things like I, you know, I've been naming them things like window light or chair light or couch light have you uh, because it's easy to it's easier to say like yeah you know uh, i'll say hey turn all the living room lights on and and that's in a group right living room lights is a group have you found any easier better or a bulletproof more, a more bulletproof way on naming these things or is it just always gonna be, maybe ai will fix that someday but is it maybe. always gonna be a chore <laughs> it, you know what 
everybody's different. You kind of have to find out the naming convention that works with you for you. My my naming convention is usually like the room name and the device, you know, in a way. So I would say again, I'll use an example of office light. And that that's because if I say turn on there to off the office light, it doesn't matter what room it's in, it knows it's the office light. Turn it off. Like I don't have to go into the Amazon ecosystem and move it into an office. You know, I could just say office light, right? Right. But then Amazon also, what nice about them is it, they have like um, room awareness, right? So if you have an Echo in like your office and you have the office light in the office room, the same room as that Echo, you could say just turn on or off the light. It will know which room you're in. It will know which light you really want to turn on. So it's kind of, you know, if you want that, you have to be a little bit more sort yeah. of, you have to sort I it better. I thought you were going to say the echo knows that you're in there. And so it just turns the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know? it, it knows that you're talking to the office echo. So it yeah. knows that it's the office light is in the same room. Yeah. So if you just say, turn on the light, it knows it. So my house is small enough that the echoes hear each other. Yes. They can, right. And which is handy sometimes because I can say it in the hallway, one of them is going to hear me, you know, yeah. but turn this on or turn that off on. One, one of the things uh, that I did, and I haven't fixed this yet, but I named, so I put a device out on the deck that is a, um, it's smart aware and I, I called it shed power. So it has, it's the extension cord out to the shed. That way, remotely from anywhere, like on a super hot day, I could turn the shed power on. I leave the air conditioner on in it. It'll fire up the shed and turn the air conditioner on and start cooling down the shed before. That way, you know, it, may, it might take an hour to cool that thing down, right? Well, shed and chair air. sound very similar in the eco, you know, in the Amazon space. And we all know how easily she can be confused about things, right? And now I'm thinking, okay, I've got to actually, I had to come up with a routine that every night at midnight, it checks that shed power and says, if it's on, turn it off because it shouldn't be on and because of just, and not me, but say my daughter is saying, turn on, you know, turn on the chair light. The chair light doesn't come on. Well, you know why? Because it turned on the shed light instead of the, the, you know. The, the, instead of, well, it's not really a light, it's called shit power, but it's still, I went out there one day and it was just blazing away, you know, it was just, and I was like, how did this get turned on? So I think, uh, I guess the moral of that story is you also, I think have to be careful as you're naming your devices, especially for the a lady. Don't, don't get the words too close because she sometimes has a hard time, you know, telling, telling those things apart. I don't know. Any thoughts on that, Gavin? No, and I totally agree. Like she gets confused sometimes every night. Like I'll say, turn on the lamp, and she'll turn on every light in the room, right, or stuff like that, right. Um, and, and in your shed situation, I remember I was listening to you. I have, it's a similar situation because I have one of my irrigation system lines that run right into my pool, and I can tell the a lady, hey, top up the pool, yeah, and she will turn on that line. It will fill up the pool to the right level and and do what it has to do, right. But I'm always nervous of it staying on you know you never know what can happen so i have it set up so that when it turns on it notifies me that it turned on and then every 15 minutes it will notify me hey i'm still running just in case i forgot about it and it didn't turn off on its own so maybe you should do that with the shed you can oh. make it set it up so that there's a time limit if you turn it on it will only run for four hours for example but then every hour it will let you know hey i'm still on you yeah, know that's a, that's a great idea that's you're okay Thanks for coming out. I've got some work to do. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the podcast. No, that's I can share my script with you to do it. <laughs> that is brilliant. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm probably going to need something like that. Um, All right, pick me up when, uh, when I turn it on. Well, I might even be able to set this in the automation of the device. When I turn it on, only allow it to be on for for a certain number of hours. Right. Something I'll have yeah. to look. I'll look because I'm a. You know, I like to try to use what they give me first yep. before I go outside the bounds. But um, some devices actually have an option in the device itself that will say only turn on for one hour and then turn back off. And that's actually safer yeah. than even home assistant because it's in the device itself. So you might want to look at that first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will. And of course, that's always the second challenge or maybe the third challenge. Like, okay, which app? 
actually controls. I could not. We have some lights that I put up on the front of the house. They're Christmas lights, but they have all kinds of different color options. And so like I do red, white, and blue on the 4th of July. We do, you know, purple and pink during, during Easter. We, you know, I, I have like browns and magentas going on right now for fall, but I couldn't, <laughs> I have an automation. It was coming on at sunset and turning off at 11 PM. And I could, I couldn't find how to shut the thing off. I turned it on the device. I shut it off. It came right back on the next day <laughs> or the next, the next evening. Where is that thing? It took me a couple evenings to kind of, to kind of figure it out. Okay. That's a great idea. Cause I need to do that. Couple comments coming in from the chat room. Uh, Tony says our most frequent use for home automation is a uh, voice light control for lamps. For sure, that works out really well. We do a lot of music that way through it. Uh, Brian says, "What? Confused? Never. Yeah, yeah. She never does. Yeah." yeah. <laughs> uh, and Tony says, "Google never gets confused either." Uh, sarcasm there intended. Uh, Dan says, "I've got Google devices, not Amazon, but constantly have issues like that." I think that on both sides, that those are pretty true, and then. Uh, Tony says, uh, tell Google to turn off uh, uh, the the one active alarm, and it proceeds to list the 10 inactive alarms. Oh, that's another, that's a whole other thing. When, well, and then the A-Lady makes suggestions for you. Well, yeah, I don't know how way. to do that, <laughs> yeah, but I could start doing this, and I could start doing that. Uh, Brian says, I have a regular issue asking A-Lady to play a particular radio station, one potential workaround is to use the Alexa app to select the station and device to plan. And that is true, right? The apps, the, the, the Amazon mm, a lady app, I shouldn't have even said the word to, I said it a second ago. Sorry if I sent off your devices, but the sometimes going into the app, uh, is the way to do it. I found that now there's a ton in that app. I don't, do you use the a lady app very often? Um, barely, to be honest, I don't remember last time I actually launched it. Like I, I think last time I launched it was to go into it and see what she heard and why, cause there's, there's the privacy section. You can see what she heard. Yep. And I was curious why she heard something else. So, um, but I barely use the app. Have you ever gone in? I think there's a section where you can listen to the last 10 instructions that were given to it or something like that. Yes. And you can hear yourself giving it instructions. And one time I have to be, I have to be careful because Sarah's right over on the other side of the wall. I can hear her whispering to it, you know, it was just hilarious. Like, yeah and then have you ever whispered to the a lady she'll whisper right back at you right back and you know what i i'm always afraid to try that because the wife would be sleeping i'd be like hey i like that you know like and, and the one time i do it she doesn't whisper back you know and it's like exactly. three o'clock in the morning and it's like thank yeah. you yeah like i love you and then all of a sudden, I know, I know you do. In fact, I've been thinking about you often. <laughs> yeah. By the volume. way, <laughs> <laughs> play starts playing. You know, I can't fight this feeling anymore. You know, all of a sudden, full volume. So, um, well, there's some. Uh, that's a that's a really good. I think on on some of those devices, like you gave me that advice. You know, run it for two hours and then shut it off. I think there's some of those things we just don't think about. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there is a, I, for, there's a night option to say, Hey, shut everything off at this hour, regardless. And you can put that light in a group. Um, do you think it's worth doing something like that? It, you know, it's going to catch you on new year's when you're up, you know, you're up past, cause you say, Hey, at midnight, just shut, shut these things down. I'm not, I'm never awake. Yeah. And then it, you can, do you think it's worth it to run a routine like that? Even though, you know, on new year's Eve, it's gonna, it's gonna, all the lights in the house are going to go off right at, at midnight. Maybe that's how, you know, maybe that's how, you know, So it's, for my night routine, it's manually uh, triggered mainly. Okay. So okay. it's, it's when we go to bed, we say good night. It closes all the blinds, locks all the doors, turns off all the lights, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah. Um, but as a backup, I do have it set that at like two 30 in the morning, if we haven't triggered it at that point, it will do a kick in itself at that point. Right. Okay. And I also have a guest mode and the guest mode stops it from triggering at all um in general because if i have a guest like house sitting or something like that they'll just go around and flick all the light switches themselves yeah. right like they they do know that routine and everything in my house can still be controlled physically by like a regular light switch so they'll yeah. go around yeah. lock the doors and flick the light switches and right. close the blinds right. and go to bed 
Right. So that's right. how I handle it here. Yeah, that's good. It's a good way to do it. We one of the things I realized on Halloween was that we control all the outside lights now automatically. And of course, the signal that you're not open for candy is just turn all off. your lights off. So I had to go in and for the day, shut everything off. I ended up uh it's like that's too much work. I just shut the I just shut the switches off. Yeah, cut the power. I actually have a switch for that too on my dashboard. So I, I set yeah. up a little button to disable yeah. um, outdoor motion lighting. So it basically won't trigger the lights um, yeah. when I turn on that button. So I think of all these little things. No, you do. You do. You're super smart that way. You you had mentioned in the notes that they that Home Assistant uh, is has been making lots of dashboards. I use the overview dashboard. And my, on my screen, I have an overview map which is basically just your location. And then I have an energy one. I don't have any energy devices, so they're not tied into that. Are there other things I should be looking for? Are When you say they've been making new dashboards, what does that mean? Well, not that they've been making um, new dashboards, but they've been putting a lot of work this year into dashboards. So um, they created a new sections kind of card that you can put other cards into now. And the main reason, the nice thing about that is, as you resize your dashboard, it resizes nicely. Things things get moved in nice ways and stuff like that, that right? Is, that is so, Yeah, it's been terrible. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And they also allow you to change, like, card sizes and stuff. That's a pretty new feature. They just added micro-changing. Um, so they've put, actually, a lot of work into the tile card and all these things for the dashboard this year that's made okay. it that much better. Okay. That's good because I was moving, you know, the, I run a Microsoft surface an old surface. That's kind of my control panel and it died. So then I had to move it to a laptop that's touchscreen. And as soon as I moved it into a new resolution, everything moved everywhere. I'm like, ah, no, I, I like them in this spot. Now, <laughs> that being said, uh, if they move around a little bit, eventually, you know, within a day or two, you kind of get you, know, it. Mm. you get kind of get used to it. It's not, it's not that important, but well, good. That's good to know. I, I do, I have noticed a little bit, you know, I think last time you were on the show, I mentioned I had two home assistant instances running, running. on my Unraid, right? Um, uh, since then, I'm back to the regular dashboard and it looks great. And I, and I, it sits right here. I have it up all the time. It's got the car on it. I've got all the um, batteries for the ring cams. I've got all the lights and plugs on it. I've got four Govi uh, humostats that have both the temperature, the, they're for the cigars, for humidity, uh, temperature, and then battery, which I think is kind of cool because you can kind of say, oh, that battery's getting close to being. What else do you, what, what, what's on your dashboard? What else do you monitor? You got a lot of stuff. How big is your dashboard? Do you have like a giant TV to run your dashboard? No. Well, when I say dashboard, for me, it's mainly just um, the app on our phone. Right, oh, that's how we control. Oh, everything. really? You don't so, put it on a PC at all? Like, no, nope. wow, nope. everything's okay. just the app on the phone. Um, and we have it on all of our both our phones. Okay. Um, and I've written the dashboards to work with the phones, right? Okay. And um, I, I've put a lot of work into my dashboards more into the making them dynamic. So, when I say that. The, the pain point for me with dashboards, especially when you have as many devices as I have, I think I'm up over 300 in terms of <laughs> devices, right? But um, it, what my dashboards was whenever you got a new in, a device and you put it all in, I had to go into multiple dashboards and edit them all to put the proper tiles there and everything like that. So that I kind of got fed up of and I, I I went to work and I created what I call dynamic dashboards. So when I get a new device, I just pick the entities I want. I put them in a room. I put them, I add a label to them. And based on that information, it knows where it goes and puts it on every dashboard that needs to be on and in whatever format it needs to be in and adds it nicely, right? So I don't have to go and edit all these dashboards. And that has, it took me a while to set that up, but it's been a combination of YAML, um, Jinja code, you know, macros, a lot of macros, and it works nicely now. So less work maintaining dashboards now. You have a lot of patience, my friend. You yeah, <laughs> I do. I watch a lot of TV and then I do this while I'm watching TV, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, speaking of Uyghur, last time he was on, he talked a little bit about Lama, right? The the LLMs from Meta. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it Lama? Oh, Lama. I think it's Oh, Lama. Oh, Lama. Yeah, that's the self-hosted one. Yep. Yeah, the self-hosted uh, LLMs, uh, basically. But I think 
when you're when you're the some of the versions that you download are called LLAMA, I think. LLMs. Yeah. And um, uh, so I gave that a try too. So I went out there, loaded up the, went out to the link, loaded up what I needed. It's all, it's all um, scripting, right? It's all, at least at this point, it's all like command line kind of stuff. But listen, I did it. It's actually, if I did it, anybody could do it, right? It's not that hard. There are a few. Don't downplay it. They, it, it's, it, it. It's actually pretty easy. I mean, once you figure out, oh, okay, we're doing it this way. This is how it works. You get the container and or not container. In my case, it was the application. I did it straight in Windows, and then you figure out a few of the commands to get this thing running. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I'm imagining then that's got some Home Assistant capabilities too right is this is it making the ai for home assistant better oh as as we move forward i've noticed the ai is getting better and better it's i'm getting more excited about it right yeah. and the things it's bringing it's still not perfect right but it's getting so much better um i don't yet host my own um ai um chat gpt or anything like that mm -hmm. mainly because I, i'm still looking for a video card that i can throw on my server that can handle it and stuff mm -hmm. like that right but i'm using chat gpt and i've actually been playing around a lot with that lately so <clears throat> i use an add-on for home assistant called llm vision right and it's mainly used for video and stuff like that and for use with your cameras yeah. And this thing has blown me away with what I've been playing around with it um, to do. So um, my my first thing of, that I, I had an issue with is I use Blue Iris for my cameras, right? <clears throat> and it has its AI built in, but it's not that good. And it especially gets choked up on things like when it's snowing or raining, then all of a sudden I get alerts of constant people in my driveway or people in my backyard you know or if there's a spider spiders love my cameras for some reason you know <laughs> it will it, it just drives it nuts right so what i do now is i actually tied it into chat gpt so what it does now is in my front at night when we go to bed the alarms arm the lights are all off and everything we're in night mode at that point right if blue iris detects somebody's in the driveway it sends a notification um, to the LLM or to chat GPT. It'll send an image, it will send it, I have it coded to ask it a specific question and chat GPT will analyze that image and say yes or no if there's really somebody in there in the driveway. Uh, yeah. And it cuts out all those false alerts and stuff at night wow. so I won't get woken up. And then wow. it, and then mm -hmm. Home Assistant will wake me up based on the answer. For the you, you're on the paid plan to do that for yes on the twenty dollar a month yes. or whatever it is. And so far, it's used very little uh, money uh, out of that account, right? I think I loaded up with ten bucks, and I've probably used maybe less than a dollar. Oh, so you're on the a, you're on the API where you can yes you, you pay for queries going in. Y okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been that was one thing I was doing, and that really took care of that problem. I was also messing around with it to try and see like people in our, our, our area like to walk their dogs, but they don't like to clean up their dogs. So I actually had it. If it detected a dog, ask it, is the dog taking a crap on my lawn? <laughs> right? And let me know if it is, right? Um, the only diff the only problem with that was is it could distinguish between, you know, dog doing number two or female dog doing number one, you know, like, so yeah. I kept getting these yeah. alerts for, you know, dogs taking a poop on your lawn, you know? And <laughs> I was like, is it really? No, that's, that's hilarious. So, but it's amazing what you could do with like that stuff. Like um, another thing I did was I just, fed it all my camera entities and I say, give me a summary of what's going on around the house. And it looked at all the cameras and it basically told me like, yeah, you're sitting in the living room, um, watching TV and in the backyard, it's very calm. And in the front, I see two cars and it described it all to me. <laughs> right. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, yeah. the, like the, what it did, you know? And like I said, it, it's still early stages, but where it's going, um, as, as it develops more, it's going to be insane. And they just released a version 1.3. Um, and the crazy part about this is now it allows historic um, uh, uh, questions to it. So basically, when it gets notifications and stuff like that, it kind of stores it in like a hidden camera in Home Assistant, uh, calendar in Home Assistant. Mm. So now when you ask it, hey, did anybody deliver a package to my home today? 
it will actually query the calendar. It'll look at the calendar and say, ah, I saw somebody delivering a package at 3.30 uh, uh, this afternoon. It looked like it was a FedEx guy and, and, and let you know that. And I'm just, it's amazing what it sees yeah. and how it determines that. The, the reason that's all, it's amazing, by the way, the, the reason I got into it is what's sitting right here, which is the, the, <laughs> the Pikesville whiskey, right? Um, what I wanted to be able to do was pick up a bottle of whiskey, put it in front of the camera, then pull it out and it would identify what whiskey it is and how full it is. And it would catalog it. And then when I was done, I would put it back or the next time I showed it, it would be like, oh you actually have less in there than you had before. And then at some point when it gets, I don't know, down to here, it would make a whiskey list for me that says, hey, the next time you're here or whatever, yep. listen, in the future, you could say, once it gets here, find the cheapest place to buy it. And then yeah. if it's under this price, buy it for me, right? Uh, go ahead and go ahead and pull the trigger, have it shipped to me or whatever. Yeah, it set some parameters in there. But the the inventory piece is what I wanted. Uh, now we figured out for because uh, we drink, you know, we we have wine often with our meals here, and so what I really wanted it to do also do the same thing for the wine upstairs. So show it a bottle of wine and then just say, "Hey, when I show it to you, take it or add it to the list of yeah. to buy next time." Well, you can actually do that really easily just by saying, "Hey, lady." Yeah. Add this to the wine shopping list, right? And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, there's an easy way to do that. But I still think it's a fairly valid show this and then, you know, catalog how much it I should be able to say how much whiskey is in there. Yeah. And it would guess something, right? Don't you think? Do you think you could I, do that I think so. And it would be good for society because it would be able to determine if you have a drinking problem or well, not too, right? Well, so. well, this, <laughs> this goes to what Justin was saying in the chat room, something along the lines of, oh, the freezer is using more power. He's thinking yes. about, hey, monitor my power, keep track of it on a regular basis, and then I want you to do some quarterly or monthly analytics on it and say, is there something I need to get looked at? Is there something beyond the standard deviation? That's the same problem, is <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Am I drinking more whiskey, more or less? <laughs> Your in, consumption is, went up this month, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Should I get you a counselor? Yeah. <laughs> Should I get you some, you know, some something to re some way, other way to relax? Yeah. Um, but Justin, yeah, you're. I mean, you're right. I think this is a good uh, indication for it. I couldn't in the scenario I was at. I didn't have enough. I don't have enough uh, skill to figure out how to get it to record things yet. So, you know, okay, show it's taking a picture of it, then it's putting it somewhere, then it's, to your point, it's giving some historical context. So then eventually I could say, give me a, oh, give me a list of all the whiskeys you've seen. Yes. Right? And that would just be an inventory list. And then how much, tell me how much is left in each. God, yeah. That would that be great. Could you do that? Do you think you have the, the, um, the I, I, if I really put my mind to it, I probably yeah. could, but I feel like this is something that should be easy to do in the future. Mm. You know, like right now you could spend a lot of time trying to get your perfect yeah. whiskey inventory app going yeah. and stuff. But I feel like in the f near future, <laughs> not too far future, you, it will just be part of the AI where it will start remembering yeah. more about you. Yeah. Well, I want it to remember. Yeah. Do I? Well, yeah. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> we're shutting off your credit card. Because you're buying, you're buying too much whiskey. No, uh, no, you know, no people more. are always afraid of it knowing too much about you. I'm at that age now where I'm like, you know what? Just figure out everything about me so you serve me better ads. I'm yeah. seeing ads, just make them more entertaining to me yeah. now. You yeah, know, right like on. yeah, yeah, right on. Justin says I don't have a alcohol problem. I have a people problem, and you know that might be that might be that might be true um, as well. Yeah, anything. Uh, AI wise, are you thinking, you know, you said in some of the stuff you're going to kind of wait uh, for it to hit, but anything else you're working on AI wise uh, with home assistant? Uh, I've played with the, uh, the voice integration. I know somebody mentioned it in the chat. I can't remember. I scroll off the bottom, I think, but you know, home assistant, uh, the crew has mentioned that they're making their own smart speaker. 
Um, they, they did say it, I think on one of their live streams, they hinted at it, you know, it was mentioned on a few other podcasts. Um, yes, there you go. It was Justin that mentioned it. Um, that is a lot of people are looking forward to that because their AI, when you get this, their AI is tied into things like chat GPT and there's multiple AIs out there and they work with multiple of them. Right. And that's where you get a lot of the value and the strength of it from. Right. I just like the Amazon lady because I have Sonos all over the house. So um, it's integrated into all the Sonos speakers too. So it's like I have one device that handles two different functions and I kind of like that. But if the, I've been watching, I actually have some of the little devices, but I never got them to work, but I'm watching this closely and we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Do you, do you think we'll get to the point where, okay, so back to the, not, wait, it, I do have an alcohol problem, but um, <laughs> back to the whiskey example where I could tell it, hey, I'm going to show you a picture of this. I want you to tell me what it is and tell me how much is left. And then I want you to remember it. And behind the scenes, the AI would write would write the code to do yes. that for you. Are we? D- d- is that happening already or are we still not there yet? I don't think I've fully utilized it i believe if you tell like chat gpt something you say remember this it adds it kind of to its little database about you right you could actually ask it tell me what you know about me and it will it will say you own this 3d printer and you're into this and you host this you know and it's interesting because it's based off of questions i asked um So I think you can be able to do that. Um, yeah. This is where I think the self-hosted would work really well because, yeah. you know, in the cloud, they're, they're worried about data. You know, all of a sudden that thing could balloon. You know, yeah. if, they, if you were like, hey, monitor every video that goes to YouTube and do, you know, all of a sudden the database gets gigantic on this thing, right? Yeah. But uh, self-hosted, there could be some... Do you know on the self-hosted ones, can I talk to those yet? Or I, everything I did, I was typing in, but have you seen anything yet where they're working with uh, voice recognition so I could just talk to it? Have you seen any of those yet? Yeah. If you tie it into Home Assistant, then you'll use the Home Assistant speaker and you'll okay. go through the Home okay. Assistant voice pipeline and okay. then it can utilize the local one, right? So yeah. there, there's ways to get into it. It's just, I think a lot of that's still maturing. Yeah. Right. They're still working on wake words and getting that perfect. You yeah. know, it's, it's not easy, but they're making a lot of progress. Okay. Okay. Well, there's a lot there. All of a sudden, you know, you start thinking about the, those kinds of, you know, it would be great to take a picture of my garage and yep. say inventory, all my tools. Yep. Like, tell me what you can see or a video you know, run through video or even multiple pictures and then say, tell me what you see and inventory it. So I know what I have. And then I want to be able to ask you, Hey, where in my garage is that? And you find it for me. I could probably do it in home assistant where you can just, again, with this LLM vision, you could just feed it a image of your garage and you say inventory, all the tools in the garage. And then based on that response, you can have the automation added to a list or something like that, you know, so it can be done. It's not the prettiest thing. And that's why I'm saying like, eventually we're going to get there where it's so easy. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, there's some, there's that, that kind of stuff, you know, it was gimmicky early. Yes. Right. It kind of gimmicky. And, you know, you'd ask it questions about you or who am I, or, yeah. you know, what, write a story about something, you know, uh, you know, write a blog post for me or whatever. But when you think about some of these inventory capabilities or some of these monitoring capabilities, and uh boy there's some really there's some really neat it's a terrible word but there's some really interesting things coming yeah right. and i'm pretty sure at work you use copilot are you guys on, on to copilot yeah. Yeah, we have yes copilot. yeah so right. one i i find i'm using ai more and more of, uh, uh, as it comes along right mm-hmm. one of the things i really like using copilot for is one of my coworkers writes a lot of documentation Right. He constantly and it's like hundreds of pages and I never read it, even though I say I do. I never really read it. Um, But some of the things I use Copilot for is when something breaks, I say, hey, look up in his documentation where he mentioned this breaking and it would actually query his documents and bring me back the information I want. I found that a time saver because I don't know where he leaves the documentation. It's somewhere on the SharePoint site, but I don't have to go through this 200 page document. I could just ask AI to find it for me. Oh, yeah. 
So I use that a lot. That reminds me. So I've been collecting. uh, I had a guy write a query for, you know, I manage this community of certified coaches for Gallup. And when they change email addresses, we don't have a really, really good way. We see it happen in one system, but the other system doesn't have awareness to it. And eventually they'll get to programming that. But in the meantime, what I did is just have them do a data dump for me once a week, goes into secure file of all the email addresses that have changed in this system for that group of people. Well, I so what I just do to it today is I just go to that folder and I use SharePoint to search all of the documents all at once to do it. But I could now ask Copilot to do that for me instead of, you know, it's, it's, it's not that much faster, not much better, but it is... Now you got me thinking. I wonder what else I can do with that data well, like, that's in there. That's I use it for a lot of stuff now, I find, like a lot of tedious tasks. So if you had a data dump of emails and the last time they were updated, for example, I would just feed that into chat GPT and say, just give me the latest email for each person, yeah. right? Yeah. And it would do all the tedious stuff instead of me doing an Excel spreadsheet and doing a VLOOKUP or whatever we used to you do. you trust it for you that? Know? You think it gets I, it right? It's been... Sp- so... I do a lot of coding with it and I would say, write a function that does this and it would spit out something. And a lot of times the function's not fully working, but it's enough to get me started. And it gets me like 90% of the way there. I make the few fixes I want and then I'm good to go, but it saves me, still saves me hours. Mm, You got me thinking. (laughs) <laughs> you got me thinking. I do have a manual process that I do every single day now, and I don't mind. It's it's not terrible, so I don't mind doing it. But I'm kind of thinking, I wonder how I could get put this in SharePoint and then have Copilot do some of that work for me. You can do it. Yeah. I did try it. One of the things I did try was some LinkedIn automation, and <laughs> Copilot said, that's not authorized. <laughs> like you, th- That's you're breaking the terms of service <laughs> on LinkedIn because it was going to be an automated process. So they don't allow those kinds of things. Yes. So I was like, no, you can't, you can't do that. Okay. Well, you give me, you give me too many things to think about Gavin when you're, when you're on here and now I'm going to your list. Tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to spend all of tomorrow trying to hack these things. Okay. Over at hometech.fm, uh, uh, you did a, a product highlight. Uh, Z- Zuzi, is that how you pronounce it? Zuz. 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 What do you got Zuz. for us? So um, if you're not familiar with Zuz, they make Z-Wave products. Um, they're one of my favorite companies when it comes to Z-Wave products. Our products are solid. They work great, and they, they have some different products. And I, this is, I bought a few of these actually this week, and they're called the... Um, if you could see it, they're called the Zoo Zen 34 remote switch. Now it looks like a toggle switch, right? Like a regular light switch, but it's a little box. And what's cool about this, right? Is you can have actually put it into the 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 into the box itself where your light switch is. So you can buy if you have a single gang um, light switch, you could buy a two gang um, plate for it. And this goes beside it. You don't have to cut the wall or anything like this. Oh, you can yeah. put this button. So it has yeah. a little backing that goes in there and then it um it's magnetic and then it sits in there, right? So it's like adding a switch to your wall without That's hilarious. wiring. That's right? hilarious. I love and it. Where I they also have a four button version of this and where I use this. So the four button one I use for my fireplace. Right. So I have that on the wall now and I actually put little icons and stuff on it. And now you start the fireplace, you just press up or you can adjust it all from that. So I have one for my fireplace. And then in every room where I have automated blinds, I actually added one of these to the the switch plates. Right. Um, So, you know, when guests are staying over whatever they know, they can open the blinds by pushing the button or close the blinds by pushing the button, you know, and it they really work really well. Wow. Like they're great little devices. What's the retail on them? And do I, what do I need to be able um, to run this? Like, do I need another device to be able to hook this thing in or how does that work? Well, they're, they're, they're Z wave devices. Okay. Right. So basically the up button in, or the down button, they just register as two events, okay. two different events. So if you press up, you can have your automation say, okay, I press up. Um, that event was triggered. Open the garage. You press down, the event was triggered, close the garage. You know, we could do things like that. I think they're about, I think they would be about 50 US or less. Okay. I'm not too sure. They're not too bad. I bought, I have about three or four of them in various rooms and I love these little things. 
On top of that, they can actually come off the wall. So if you if you wanted to just take it off and you know move it to another place in the room, yeah. you know, and, and control whatever if you use it to control volume, for example, and then you can just stick it back on into the plate, you know, wow. uh, when you're done. So yeah, it's yeah, great little device. I had a Philips one. I think it was Philips. I had a I had a device like that. Now it already came on the plate, but it was designed to screw into the box that you would basically just cover. Like you're not yes. going to have, like, you're going to jam the wires back in there and then you're just going to cover it with this plate. And it was a switch. It was a three-way or maybe four-way switch on there where you could do, and it had the different symbols on it. And then you would pair it with whatever, whatever light you were going to, you know, you'd push the buttons and dance around with tapping your head and it would eventually pair with something. And then you could do it that way. But I, I find those handy. Um, uh, and Brian's asking if you've got a link for that, do you can, you, um, a- you could get it on Amazon um, or the smartest house.com. I think it is Here. that, that they're the zoos there. That company owns that site and you can order directly from them. If you're in the I'll States, the name, I'll put the name yeah. of it uh, Brian, yes. in, in, in the chat there. Uh, zoos Zen 34. If you're on audio. Yeah. So I, I found those to be helpful. I did try to wire up some of these, like, some of these switches that and it's been a while, but some of the older switches had a big box on the back side that you'd wire. And I think I fried a couple of those because I was trying to put them into the garage and those were metal boxes. Yes. And the tolerance on the sides was super small. It, it's it's almost like they didn't make them small enough, right? To get all the smarts in them. They just didn't get it as small as it needed to be. And so I kind of gave up on some of those switches, you know, like, uh, but these there's no 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 wiring and stuff like, yep no nope. <laughs> it's all yeah. it's it's so nice though you know i've replaced so many lights i've replaced every light switch in my house so i've kind of gotten it down to a science of getting yeah. into the yeah. small you know where you put electrical tape around the sides yeah. and you know right. how to wiggle it in and then i use those wiggle um clip in you those know connectors great. yep they free up so much space in that box so i kind of got it down to a science now and I have no more to change anyway, so. Uh, did I take those out to the garage already? Hold on, let's see. Uh, I had a whole bunch of them. I have a whole box of those wagon. Man, they they're awesome. Are, they are awesome. I just put in the, I have a 50 amp generator service coming into the house now that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. It'll make a future show at some point when we're all, we're all done. It's, I've got the backbone of it built. Uh, I, I have the wire that, going into the fuse panel, right? I'll put a 50 amp breaker in there so that I can switch off the grid power and switch on the generator power. Built it in a way I could put batteries in if I need to. Everybody I know is sick of me talking about this thing because I've been <laughs> spending so much time. On. And I still need to run the outlet out the wall. I had to get a one inch uh, concrete bit to get through the wall. So I'll drill yeah. that through and put it in. Um, but those for all the I put in eight, um, you know, regular plugins to it. Plus, well, the other ones wouldn't matter. Those wires are too big. But twelve to twenty gauge wires, you just slide the things in, and it grabs them. And you fold it back in. Like no more wire nuts. No yeah. more taping yeah. those things. It's awesome. They're amazing. The the only part that upsets me with them is they make a one, two, three, and five, you know, yeah. connection one. You know how many times I've needed a four, you know, <laughs> right. and of course they do yeah. not make them in four. So just yeah. use the five. Just use yeah. The five. It's, I it's fine. It. Yeah. It's fine. They're not that. <laughs> They're not. Uh, I think I bought a pack of ten, like for the three, you know, for three wire. Like I, you can buy a kit of them uh, on Amazon and get a variety, a sample pack for like, t- I don't know, 20 bucks, whatever. Uh, and then I bought some uh, here at Menards. Uh, I bought some, and I think it was a pack of eight or 10. It was like three or four bucks. They're not terribly expensive. They're just a million times better than a wire nut. I mean, it's so much better. It is crazy. And then with the ones I had, uh, when you go to pull it, you know, they, you push them in and they lock in. And then with these, if you spin it, it, it'll allow you to pull them out on that one. The other ones I bought from the actual company have a little, have a little lever a little, yeah. little lever on there. You can flip. Oh man. Now I'm looking for things to wire. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> oh, 
Like, I know. Like, I know. Take that box apart, and so yeah, they have they have definitely made wiring a lot better, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and I have devices where you know they're seasonal, so I have to unwire them and rewire them, and the wires start to get worn down when you, you use yeah. the wire nuts. So these save the wires too, like my pool pump. You know, like it makes it so much easier. Yeah. No, they're they're awesome. If you have not, if you haven't been using those yet, uh, definitely get out there and get them. W a g o, I think is the is the right yeah. spelling for that, and uh, and get those. They're getting super popular. I'm sure there's some knockoffs that are coming out uh, with it, but they're getting really popular in the wiring space. If you're doing this kind of stuff, uh, uh, definitely uh, worth a look. What's uh, what's coming up? HomeTech.fm is the site that Gavin is at on a regular basis. What's coming up out there? What are you guys looking forward to? It, we've been really busy over there, um, which is a good thing. So, you know, Seth, thanks to Mike, has been playing with Mesh Tastic. So he's been talking about that a bit. And, you know, he's also looking into power generators. So he lives in Florida. He lives in Sarasota, Florida. And the last mm. hurricane went right over his house. And it was kind of cool. Well, actually, it wasn't cool, but it was, you know, cool. Right, right. But he set up a camera outside his house. So we watched yeah. the hurricane as it came in until it knocked out the camera. So, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, he just lost a few shingles and some uh, gutters and stuff. It wasn't too bad where he was. He, he he got away with a lot. Neighbors got hit a bit hard, but, you know, he's now looking into the power generators. And Ooh. he heard you talking about it and stuff. He's like, I got Bing, Jim, yeah. and C. Get yes. some advice there, you know? Yes. So, yes. And when he makes some decisions. From okay. And when he <laughs> makes some decisions, we're going to have him back on here. And we're going to... I can't stop talking about it. Kevin. <laughs> the people at work are like, shut up about <laughs> yes. generators. Yeah. You know? So well, cool. What else? Um, and then we had a few interviews recently. So we had Tom and Owen from the home cinema design podcast coming in. They uh, talked about home cinema design. If you're a home cinema person, these guys are at a next level. Like when they look at certain things, I I'm blown away. You know, um, they know all the math and everything like that to design your home cinema. And they've worked on some really expensive rooms. So it was a great interview. I I, I wasn't there for that one, but Seth and TJ held down the, the shop while, while with them. And it was a great one. We also had an interview with um, Maxwell. He's the founder of a, a product called Aqu Aqua Flower. And it's basically a device that ties into Home Assistant that uh, monitors and waters your plants right so it's a really cool device um we talked about even the future of adding maybe things like soil sensors and things oh, like yeah. that oh, to it. so like yeah. yeah you, you know like <laughs> um and then i you know i we have another interview coming up um i don't know if i can say this one yet but uh it will have something to do with robotic lawnmowers so oh, you cool. know that's a little spoiler <laughs> That Good. one's coming up soon. And um, yeah, yeah. I'm also, you know, going to be talking about Apollo Automation. They sent me a whole bunch of devices, air quality sensors, the plant nice. soil sensors, yeah. in-house stuff. So that's really cool stuff. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on over at hometech.fm. Um, and then myself, I'm going to be on the Home Assistant podcast in the next couple of weeks. So I no kind of idea that. It, it, that's them that's the company that runs that podcast or is it a bunch of no i think it's um fans of home assistant but they've right. been doing it for so long and they kind of got the name so i think they're almost like the official podcast now right and i just realized one of the guys on the podcast actually lives in the same city as me so maybe i'll meet oh. up with him who knows like okay We'll see, but yeah, that'll be in the next week or so. I think I'll be on that podcast. Is this like uh, ha uh, has podcast dot io? Is that the right? Uh, yes, I think that's it. That's that's right. I'll throw that in the chat room. H a s s podcast dot io. If you want to ch check that out, you'll be on here in a couple weeks. Is that when yes? You're going to join? Yes, okay. I'm supposed. I think recording next Friday. Um, yes, that's the website. And Phil. Phil. Phil and, and Rohan? Yes, that's them. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 So, of course, more that we'll be talking about Home Assistant, obviously. Probably going yeah. into more my setup personally and stuff like that. Well, you have a lot. I mean, you should be on that podcast. On, I mean, the, <laughs> the home tech guys, I mean, you, you certainly carry the weight over there, TJ and Seth, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. You're carrying those guys. But uh, uh, you know, I'm sure you you you're you're going to be a good guest for them on the Home Assistant podcast. So good work. They they always have great guests. Though sometimes um, the guests they have blow me away with what they've done with Home Assistant. So cool. it's it's a really good listen. 
Okay. We'll have to watch that. Anything else? And I'll wrap it. I uh, know that pretty wrong? much sums it up. Like uh, it there's wrong? plenty other things, but that's all good. Oh yeah. Plenty of other things. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on. Always. Thanks for saying yes, regardless of how much time I give you <laughs> to, to say yes. And, uh, and appreciate you and your, your love of, of uh, home assistant and all things tech. It's a great fit. So, Gavin, thanks for coming on. You're preparing for the winter, right? I mean, winter's coming. Yep. I know it feels like summer. Have you got the pool drained? Is everything of course. covered yep. up? You're all you're all taken care of. Uh, pool's done. Everything's disconnected. Lines are blown out of all the irrigation system. I just did the tires this weekend, so okay. you know I got the winter tires on. I'm pretty much ready for it to get cold. I said that last year though, and I don't think I shoveled once, or I may have shoveled lightly <laughs> once. And we bought uh, a new snowblower. And oh. I never got to use it last year. That, that's Ga like, gas or battery. It was gas. Yeah. It's gas. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll get to use it this year. We will see. I would go start it right now. That'll guarantee. Oh, that's this weekend. Snow. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> go out, change the oil, put some fresh gas in it. Doing no that this snow. weekend. Going to get guarantees. it all tuned up and ready. Yep. Yeah. Guarantees <laughs> you'll never get any snow. It's when you can't start it. I kind of need to. Uh, that's a good reminder. I need to pull my my snowblowers in the shed, and I need to pull that out, get it into the garage, yeah. and get it started. Uh, probably change the oil in the mower. I like to do that before I put it in for the winter because I never – in the spring, you know, you, you have that moment when you're like, I need the mower now. Yes. Like it, I don't want to – you know, so I try and get that done in the fall. And I probably need to pull my generator out and get that started. I haven't run it since the power outage in June. And you know you kind of want to run those things, get get the gas kind of fresh. get familiar sure. with it, you know. Yeah. It, yeah, just make sure it's still running. It pulls on the first, it starts on the first pull. Some of those kinds of things. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's always a sad day when you close the pool, but uh, it will be open here before. What do you do with the 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 home automation that you have to shut down on those? Because you're you're monitoring this and that and all these things on your pool. Are you ever tempted to repurpose some of those devices during the winter to, to nope. do other? <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> so the, the I, I see where you're going with this. I know what you do. I don't run into that mistake. What? So my um the pool pump switch is hardwired right. out there, right. so I can't yeah. remove it. So it stays like right. out there. I just cut power to it, and then the water temperature monitor and the water level monitor kind of clip into my basket, into my skimmer. So I just pull those out. I throw them in a little box. I don't even take the batteries out. I just leave them in the home assistant. Let them keep reporting, and. Oh. they're just inside okay. that's it right okay all right yeah this might be the first year that the christmas tree plug actually stayed in the christmas tree box <laughs> and we'll we'll <laughs> home assistants waiting for it to to fire back up uh yeah i haven't did i take it out of the uh, hp i guess i took it out i'm gonna have to add it back into my to my i've got the the shed and the litter box light and the garage light and all Everything else is there. Usually when you take out a device camera. that's unpowered for a long time, like if it's a Z-Wave or Zigbee, I usually recommend to just exclude it and add it back the next season, right? Yeah, because yeah. then it's not in the device as a dead device, you know, that could affect network performance and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's in the box. I didn't right. pull it out this year. I wrote on it christmas tree do not remove <laughs> i leave my christmas tree plug in the wall like i just leave it there and I wish all I could. the automation still click it on and off and everything like it's still I going could. but which you know. i need a flat christmas tree that just you would just put on the wall and it's the shape of a christmas tree but it's just flat a half christmas tree <laughs> yeah well i don't yeah. know what's sticking out i mean i don't want to stick it out halfway i want it about this thin which is about two inches thin and just the shape of a christmas tree and it would just give off the lights of a maybe i could put t listen last thing tvs are pretty cheap maybe i could get a big giant 70 inch tv mount it to the wall in portrait mode and then just run a picture of a christmas tree I'm going to start the up the Christmas tree channel where the <laughs> lights, <laughs> the lights go in pat patterns. We're going to get this. We're going to make some money off this, you know, 50 different like Christmas you. trees. Yeah. yeah. Every, every day yeah. you get a different Christmas tree on there. Hmm. <laughs> I've done the, I've done the thing on the, you know, up here where it's got the fire, you know, I've got a, you know, a, a picture of a window and a fire going, you know, in the background or whatever. Yeah. 
Christmas trees. Maybe that's because they have the fireplace well, channel, right? So I mean, uh, Christmas. Yeah, no, channel. right on. Christmas yeah. trees, Christmas. You, you never know. Well, Gavin, again, thanks for coming on. Can you stay? Can you stay for just a second? As of course. I close this up? Is that okay? All right. A uh, couple reminders on the way out. If you want to join our Discord group, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. Good conversation. Maybe one good conversation a week. So it's not going to take a ton of your time. If you want to join that, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. Leave me a message. If you got a got 30 seconds of a question or a comment or whatever, head over to homegadgetgeeks.com. There's a little button there, microphone button. Push it, leave a message. Love to hear from you. And uh, just Baba Booey me if you're gonna if you're gonna do nothing, just leave kind of a crazy message. That won't make the show, but you never know. The average guy.tv platform, both web and media hosting, still powered by Maple Grove Partners. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. And Christian, coming back here first week of December, so we're not too far away. Plans still start at 10 bucks a month. Uh oh, I should say as low as 10 bucks a month. Uh, if you want to check it out today, check it out, maplegrovepartners.com. He can host. He's he's really good at hosting podcasts, but he can he can host just about anything. Uh, so check it out today. If you want to send me an email, and many of you do, I appreciate that when you do, send it to jim at theaverageguy.tv, and uh, appreciate it. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central. Well, not every Thursday, but most Thursdays. We're out here at 8 p.m. Central. 9 Eastern out here at the average guy.tv slash live. If you haven't head out to the YouTube channel, maybe you're missing shows because you're not subscribed. Well, subscribe on your podcast app or subscribe on uh, YouTube and you'll get automatic notifications. I mean, speaking of home assistant, I need my own home assistant, home gadget geeks app that just sits there and tells people there's a new show available. Gavin, can you write that? Maybe write it for home tech. To, maybe it's a service of some kind, right? Uh, you could probably, because there's plugins for things like um, Slack and stuff that can send notifications. So maybe yeah. it can be automated. You just press a button and boom, it shoots out the latest one. Yeah. Or I could push the button on Home Assistant and it would just play through my speakers. All right. There right. you go. Yeah. There you go. Did, it doesn't have a podcast player. Home Assistant doesn't have a podcast player. Uh, I don't know if it plays. It has media player built okay. in, which is pretty yeah. cool because you could send yeah. that to airplay all to your speakers and stuff. I don't know mm -hmm. if it has direct integration with podcasts, but podcasts are just RSS feeds. They so are. something can be done. Yeah. You talk to the guys about it. When you're talking to those guys on the podcast, say, Hey, my buddy, Jim over <laughs> at, at home gadget geeks. He wants his own home gadget geeks, home assistant app that plays the show. Uh, if you're listening live, thanks for coming out tonight. And uh, and and for all of those of you listening on the podcast, why don't you come out and join us? I'd love to see you on a Thursday. It's not hard. Just head out to theaverageguy.tv slash live. Thursday night, 8 p.m. We'd love to see you. Thanks for coming out. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.